Hi, everyone. Anthony Morganti here. Very quickly, I want to mention something at the top. Over the past few days, I've received several emails. I even received a message on Instagram from people asking me if I was okay because I haven't done any YouTube videos in over two weeks. Typically, I do three or four a week. Well, first of all, I'm very touched and humbled that people care enough about me to ask me if I'm okay. Uh, The truth is I'm doing great. Thank you very much for asking. I've just been very busy. We're remodeling our upstairs, and that's been taking a lot of my time. And I was putting the finishing touches on my latest course. It's called Photoshop Unleashed. I just released it this past Saturday. Uh, If you're interested in learning more about Photoshop Unleashed, I'll have a link to my course in the description below this video along with a discount code that will save you $20. Now, in today's YouTube video, I'm going to actually give you a sneak peek of one of the videos I do in Photoshop Unleashed. That is how to create a painting from a photograph. Now, if you are on YouTube for any length of time, you probably uh, have seen other uh, YouTubers, for lack of a better term, uh, do videos on how to do this because it's kind of the hottest new thing, I guess, to do in Photoshop. And I did include it in the course. I may or may not do it differently than some of those other YouTubers. The way I do it, I think, is the easiest way. Uh, But let me just show you. It has to do with generative AI, by the way. Uh, So it is something uh, that is um, fake, for lack of a better term. So uh, just let me show you how you do it. So I have an image opened up into Photoshop. We're going to use a tool called Quick Mask. The keyboard shortcut for Quick Mask is the Q key. It is on the toolbar. It's over here. It's right here. This is the Quick Mask tool. If you do not see it, you could edit your toolbar so it appears here. To do that, go up to Edit. Then go down to Toolbar, and then it's right here. This little uh, icon, just if it's off, just click it on, and you'll see it will appear in your toolbar. Or you can just click on Restore Defaults, and it will appear there. Now, once it's there, we have to make sure that it is set up the correct way. To do that, just double-click on it, and you'll bring up the Quick Mask options. Now, by default, it should be on Masked Areas. That's the color indicates Masked Areas. That's what we want. So make sure it is on that. If for some reason yours is on selected areas, change it to masked areas and click OK. Now, once that is done, it should be on. If it isn't on, again, hit the Q key or click on it so it's on. You can tell when it's on. It looks like that. And you can see that the layer has this reddish tinge to it. Now, we're going to click on the front swatch. And what we want to do is where it says B, this is the brightness level. We want to change this to 20%. Now, we're going to start out at 20 and see how that works. The lower the number you put in here, the more it's going to look like a photograph. The higher the number you put in here, the more it will look like a painting. And as a matter of fact, if you go too high, it won't look anything like your photograph. It'll look just like a bunch of paint on a canvas. And I'll show you that in a moment. So let's start out by putting 20% here and click OK. Now, what we want to do is we want to fill the entire canvas with that front swatch. The keyboard shortcut to do that is to hold in the alter option key and then hit the delete key if you have a Mac or the backspace key if you have a PC. You also could do that uh, through the menu. You could go up to edit, down to fill, and then you could change this contents to foreground color and then click OK and you'll see you'll have this kind of red overlay now because it is a mask. Now turn quick mask off. You could do that by hitting the Q key on your keyboard or just clicking on it. So now it's off, and it doesn't look like we did anything, but there is a selection here. Now, once you have that selection here on the contextual taskbar, you'll have a generative fill button. If you don't see the contextual taskbar, go up to Window, and then make sure it has a check mark next to it. It's at the bottom of the menu. Now we're going to click on Generative Fill, and you could put some type of painting here. I like watercolor, so I'm going to put watercolor painting and you're going to click generate. Now, of course, this is using generative AI, so it's going to send your image up to Adobe servers and it is going to use a generative AI credit and it will come back with three variations of a watercolor painting. And you can see here's one, here's a second one, 
and here's a third one. Now, if you do not like any of these, there is a button here called generate and you could generate three more. You also could alter your prompt a little bit. So if you want to say, you know, watercolor painting, uh, you know, reddish or something like that, or sepia toned or something, you could put that there, but I could generate three more. And again, it will go up there to Adobe servers and it will come back with three different variations of the watercolor painting. And you can see how easy this is. In the past, uh, to get a kind of a painterly look, we would have to use a custom set of brushes uh, to do it. And granted, if you did use a custom set of brushes to get your painterly look, you could customize it and make it look a lot more like you want it to look. Whereas if you're using generative AI, it's hit and miss. You can see how all of these are d different, but kind of the same, right? So it's hard to tell like which one's better, which, you know, and you know, you might like uh, a facet of one and I accidentally clicked this little up arrow here and that's going to enhance the detail because with generative AI, you're limited to a 2000 by 2000 pixel resolution. So if um, that little up arrow is there, you could enhance the detail and make it look a little more resolute, for lack of a better term. Uh, if you need to, you could say I accidentally clicked it, so now it's grayed out. I could do it for that one, that one, that one, and so on. But I digress. My point is, uh, it's kind of hit and miss of what you'll get. So you might like uh, maybe her face in this one, but you don't like the background, but you like part of the other one, and so on. So um, here it might not be as um, satisfying as if you use the custom set of brushes, but it is much easier. Now, I'm going to go back to uh, the history panel here, and I'm going to go back to when I opened this image. So this is as if I didn't do any editing at all. And I'm going to go back to the quick mask, and I'm going to go to this front swatch. And this time, instead of 20%, I'm going to just change this to 60%. So it's higher, which means it's going to be more painterly and less photo photograph. Less photo -y. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to click OK. Now... Uh, before I went up to the menu to fill this, I'll use the keyboard shortcut on my Mac. It's, it's option delete on a PC. It's alt backspace. So I have it all selected, turn quick mask off, just click right on it. And you see, we have marching ants this time. You'll get marching ants sometimes, sometimes you won't. It depends on what that percentage is that you put in for the brightness or B level. The higher the number you put in there, then you'll start to see marching ants going around the outside. We'll go to generative fill. We'll go to watercolor painting. And we'll click generate. Now, this one may or may not look like our model when it comes back. Uh, I'm pushing the limit, I think, here. So it may come back and look totally like a different person. And as you can see there, there, and there. So a little more, uh, I kind of like that one, actually. But um, it's kind of more Picasso in that one. And that one's nice. Now, let's do it one more time. Let's go back to open. Let's go to the quick mask mode. Let's go to our swatch here. And we try 20 and 60. Now, this time, let's try 10. Okay. And we'll click OK. Now, we're going to fill. Quick mask is on. We're going to fill the, uh, the image with that front swatch color by hitting option delete. And I said front swatch color but it's red and we're, our front swatch color is dark gray. Um, because we're masking, it's going to show the red mask. All right, just clarify that. So we'll turn quick mask off. Then we'll go up to generative fill and we'll go to water color painting. And we'll click enter. And now it should look more like a photograph now and less like a painting than all the other examples I showed you. So there's one there. And there's one there. And there's one there. That one might be the best one, even though it, her lips kind of look a little like Joker. But that's how you do this watercolor uh, painting thing. Or you could put oil painting in there. You could put any type of painting you want. You could try maybe a pencil sketch, although I haven't tried it. You could give it a try, see if that works, or a pencil drawing, something like that. But that's how you do it. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different uh, photographers doing YouTube videos on how to do this. Um, it's kind of the in thing to do right now. I did include this in the course. Also in the course, you'll get the file to download uh, so you can work along at home. And also in the course, I actually have an action that you could run that will do this automatically. Uh, so you could check that out. And again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to the course. I have a link to the course contents. 
so you can see exactly what's in the course. And I'll have a discount code so that you could save $20 if you choose to purchase the course. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.